For number 13, we have a simple random sample of home sale prices. And we're going to construct a 99% confidence interval with and without the outlier. So copy the table into Excel to get started. And you need to identify the outlier right away. And it's this home here that's selling for, or at least it's listed for a lot more than any of the other home prices. So that's our outlier. And so for all 12 homes, we're going to start by finding the average, the mean for those 12 homes, and then the standard deviation of our sample here of 12 homes. And then we're going to construct a confidence interval around our sample mean here. And I'm going to use Excel to calculate the t-value needed. t.inverse.2tails. We want the first parameter to be 0.01. 1% because if we're 99% confident that means there's just 1% in the tail and then we have 11 degrees of freedom because there's 12 homes in our sample and then our margin of error is going to be at t critical value multiplied by the standard deviation divided by the square root of 12 so you get your margin of error and then you take our sample mean and at and add the margin of error to get the upper bound sample mean subtract the margin of error you'll get the lower bound so we are 99 percent confident that all the homes on the market the average price of all the homes is going to be with within this range here between this lower and upper bound so that's about a hundred and fifty thousand dollar spread a little bit more than that is how wide our confidence interval is so now let's get rid of the outlier and construct or figure out the mean and the standard deviation for just the 11 homes in our sample besides the outlier. And so you'll see the standard deviation gets a lot smaller. The mean goes down because we threw out that high home listing price. We need to recalculate our T value here because our degrees of freedom has changed to 10 now because instead of Instead of using all 12 homes, we're just using 11, so we just have 10 degrees of freedom. And then calculate the margin of error the same way. You're going to multiply your t value times the sample standard deviation and divide by the square root of 11, because our sample size has just 11 in it when we throw out the outlier. And then take your sample mean and subtract the margin of error to get the lower bound and add the margin of error to get the upper bound. So now we're 99% confident that if we exclude the outliers, the average home sale price will fall within this range. And so this interval is a little less than $100,000, while here we were over $150,000. So we've shrank our confidence interval down quite a bit by throwing out the outliers. For number 14, we're trying to build a confidence interval for cholesterol levels, and we want to be 99% confident, and we want our margin of error to be only three points. So if we want to hit this specified criteria, we can do that if we make our sample size large enough. And also note in this problem, they tell us the standard deviation. So let's figure out how big a sample size we need in order to hit that criteria. And so we're given the standard deviation. Here's the margin of error we want. We need to figure out what the critical value is going to be for 99% confident. And you can either look it up in the book or use Excel. I did it here with Excel. Norm.s.inverse. And if there's just 1% in the tail end, because we're 99% confident, that means each individual tail has 0.5%. So your parameter here needs to be 0 0.005, and you'll get the z-value. So then here's the formula for the number we need in our sample, and I got that from page 447 of the textbook. You take your z-value, you multiply by the standard deviation, divide by the margin of error, and then square that result. So I'm going to take my z-value here. I multiply it by the standard deviation, and then I divide by the margin of error. 
And notice my z value is negative here because I, uh, that's what Excel gives you back, the left tail end z value. The book would give you positive 2.5, the right tail end z value. It doesn't really matter which one you use in this formula because we're going to square it and the negatives become positive when you square it. So I got to this point and now when I uh, square the result to get my final number that I need in my sample. So here I just take my previous value and square it. I get the positive result. And I can't have a percentage or a fractional person in my sample. So I need to always round up to the whole value, the next largest whole value. Because 203 is not quite big enough, so I can't round down. I need a little bit more than 203. So I need to go all the way up to 204. And that's how many individuals I'll need in my sample in order to be 99% confident and have just a three mar a margin of error to be just three. For 95%, what we need to do is calculate the critical Z value for 95%. So I'm going to do norm dot S dot inverse here. And if there's 95%, that means there's just 5% in both tails, which means 0.025% in each tail. And then I had already populated this with what I needed. A Z value multiplied by a standard deviation, divided by margin of error. And then square that result. And again, I can't have a fractional amount of people in my study, so I'll need to actually have 118 people in the study to be 95% confident. So notice how much smaller the needed amount of people became from 204 down to 118 if we reduce the confidence that we want in our interval.